in tech sales in particular, I remember running a discovery, like an entire discovery call, like uh, the prospect is holding her baby and the baby was just like screaming bloody murder. She was like having a tantrum and I'm just trying to keep it together. Welcome to Outbound, where we talk about strategies and tactics to help you build deeper relationships with your ideal customers. Today, I have Juan Arcila on with me. He is an account executive that helps growing SaaS companies close new business. And I specifically wanted to have Juan on because I've known him for a while and our introduction was from outreach that he did and personalize it and connect it with me. Um, so I had him on my previous podcast because he had done, it, I'd consider it warm outbound where the company he was working for had built rapport, but then he reached out to me with a, a very well-crafted, clearly researched uh, email and it caught my attention. And I wasn't in a position to buy from him at that point, but we've built a relationship that's been ongoing for quite some time. And so I wanted him to share some of his knowledge about how to connect with people in a personalized way. Um, and so, yeah, Juan, welcome to the show. Uh, thank you, Joseph. It's great to be here. Thank you for having me. Yeah. So what is the strategy that's worked most effectively for you to build relationships with your ideal customers? Yeah, you know, I think as a seller, it's important to have a tool belt of different skills, of different strategies and tactics that you can pull out at a moment, depending on the situation. But it's good to have like a North Star, a, a framework, if you will, of how to approach sales. So to me, um, I think of it as radical honesty. So from the first interaction that I have with a prospect, I want to be as upfront and on, as honest as possible. Because the, the common trope or stereotype with sellers is that we're dishonest, right? We're kind of a sleazy car salesperson that's trying to get one over you. So um, starting from like the get-go, you know, I'm a, a big proponent of cold calling. So when I call somebody and get somebody on the phone, I don't tell them like, hey, how are you? Because that's a little bit disingenuous. I don't really know them. It's kind of like a default hmm. kind of remark. And they can give you a default answer. You're like, oh, yeah, good. Or they hang up on you. I tell them right up front, it's like, hey, I'll, I'll be completely up front and you're probably going to hate me for this, but this is actually a cold call. Not sure if that makes you want to slam your phone against the wall or let me have 30 seconds. It's up to you. And more often than not, that gets a chuckle, you know, and especially from like the, the C-suite or VPs are like, oh, you know, just for saying that, I'm willing to kind of give you 30 seconds. So radical honesty, just putting yourself up there, I think goes a long way. Yeah, I love that. And especially when it comes to cold calling, because I know you and I have had conversations about this. I'm not a huge fan of cold calling, but part of the reason is because so many people do it horribly. You know, they're not doing any research. They don't know who I am. They're not really even in line with pain points and problems. It's just they scrape my stuff from Zoom Info and <laughs> feel like they have the right to call me five times in a day. And it's like, dude, I'm not interested <laughs> in yeah. what you're selling. Like, you know, find me where I'm actually spending time. But, um, I think that that approach where you're taking that, um, having that radical transparency and, and really kind of putting them first in that sense and giving them the opportunity to be like, hey, you know, this isn't great or I'm not interested off the bat. And to your point, if somebody called me and, and they said that, I probably actually would at least give them time to tell me why they're calling and uh, open up the door. Yeah, absolutely. Just being transparent, being upfront. I mean, that's that's an actual pattern interrupt. You know, a lot of people talk about pattern interrupt in emails and calling. And the best one is just like literally being honest, you know, putting yourself out there. And, you know, so some people might be in a bad mood and then may not be willing to have the conversation. But if you catch them off guard and like, you know, it's it's the right timing, like you can at least have that conversation and see where you can take the relationship moving forward. And then radical honesty applies not only to when you're making a cold call like that. So if people who are listening, cold calling isn't the way that they, you know, are, are reaching out to people. Um, I know you'd mentioned a couple different ways that that applies, uh, you know, through pricing specifically or bringing up the hard conversations first. Um, could you talk to that a little bit? Yeah, no, absolutely. Um, in my previous role, I was at a startup and we didn't really have a lot of name recognition. Um, so I wanted to kind of try different things, see what really works, see what doesn't. And one of the things that I experimented with was uh, the beginning of my discovery call. So instead of going to that typical upfront contract, like, hey, you know, if you know if we're not a good fit, we can part ways. Or like, if we if we if it is a good fit, let's schedule a demo. I mean, that has its place. But at the beginning, I'm like, hey, before we jump into the, the call, can I tell you the three reasons why we're probably not going to end up working together? 
And they're not used to hearing that. They're used to kind of that initial offer contract, the seller setting an agenda, guiding the conversation. It's kind of like on autopilot for them. But being upfront, being radically honest with them and telling upfront, like, here are the three reasons, you know, one is pricing, we're a premium solution. You know, if you're looking for a product that's cheap or you know, like an entry level product, we may not be the best fit. Second is timing. If you don't have the time and resources to invest in an evaluation, probably not going to be the best fit for you because we require implementation, a POC, and then whatever the third reason that you want to throw in there, right? So front loading those hard conversations first, it's, it's a great way to build rapport and trust with your ideal customer. Yeah, I think that's incredibly important because the times I've been most frustrated in a, in a B2B complex sale environment that most of us are operating in, it's when people are not upfront, especially about pricing. Because usually I know what the price is that it, I, I know what price that we can afford. And there's no amount of, um, you know, premium solution or extra features or differentiation that's going to all of a sudden magically create 10 times what the budget is that I have. And so if people are upfront with that at the beginning, it just saves a ton of time where I'm like, okay, well, it, it's not going to be a fit because I know the client that I'm working with has five grand and you guys start at 50. It's not even, you know, we're not going to waste time either way. But then in the future, if they were honest like that, I'll want to reach out to them and, you know, I'll have that in mind when I'm going into it. Or maybe try to go back and rework the budget and then come back to them and go, hey, you know, I, I would like to try to work with you after all. Um, whereas if you don't share that, and I've had that happen most of the time, you get to the very end, they finally share the price after they went, took an hour meeting and turned it into an hour and a half and shared all these <laughs> slides. And they're like, okay, and it's, you know, 50 grand. And you're like, okay, well, it's not going to be a good fit. It's like, then you feel cheated and like they wasted a bunch of your time. Yeah, no, that's... That's annoying, just being a buyer and, and being on the other side of things as well. Um, and also, like, a, a lot of sellers, they, they kind of want to hope that if they provide enough value up front, that the price at the end wouldn't be a big shock for the person, right, for the prospect that you're speaking to. Like, yeah, let's have a conversation. Let's identify the pain point. Let's quantify the pain. And then at the end, whatever I give them, it's not going to matter because, hey, this is how much the problem is costing you. And yeah. this is how much your solution costs. You know, A is higher than B. Like, obviously, you should buy us, right? But if you physically don't have the budget and the bank to pay for you, yeah. I mean, they can just put it out of nowhere. Um, so I think it is important to be just transparent and you have those conversations up front. And they'll respect you for it, like you said. And if there isn't a good fit right now, down the line, you can have a good customer or they can refer you, right? It's all about building those relationships. Yeah, and I want to get back on... Uh, on, on track here, but one thing that is really important about that is to me, that's kind of where marketing or creating a personal brand or doing those sides of things, you know, the, the side of things I really have focused on is helpful because you can be building that value upfront before they're ready to buy. But by the time they get on a discovery call with you, they've already defined their requirement, almost always, they've defined their requirements, they know what they need, they have a budget. And it's almost too late at that point to really be consultative unless you, you know, I, to a degree. I mean, it depends on uh, the situation, but you kind of have lost that opportunity already if you don't reach them early enough in the buying decision because they've already kind of figured it out. They've gone to their boss. They've gotten approval for yeah. solving X, Y, Z. And um, so anyway, if you can reach them ahead of time, be building that rapport, be starting that conversation before they're ready to buy, that's where you build that upfront value. And then when you get on the call, they, they already understand and, you know, put your pricing on your website so that they come into the call prepped with that already. <laughs> anyway, <laughs> I don't want to derail the conversation because that's not Sorry. something most sellers can, can, uh, <laughs> can do much about. So tell me about a time when you've had that radical transparency uh, or radical honesty and, and it's paid off for you. Yeah. Um, in my previous role, I was selling to a large uh, CPG company, you know, consumer pack goods. Um, they were a company that manufacture um, like blenders and other types of kitchenware. Um, so I started the conversation by cold calling one of the directors of product development. Um, and he went to voicemail. I'm like, okay, whatever. I just hung up. But she called me right back right afterwards. And she's like, hey, who's this? I just got a missed call. And I could have gone through the regular spiel. I was like, hey, I'm calling from XYZ. How are you today? But I'm like, let me just try a different approach. Let me just be honest. Like, Hey, um, I mean, you're probably going to hate me, but I, I 
this is actually a sales call. I'm not sure if you want to hang up on me after that or just give me 30 seconds. And she laughs. She's like, oh, what's up? Kind of like a, a friend. She's like, oh, okay, what's up? And I went through my pitch. My, you know, here's the three problems that we help solve. Um, and we just continued the conversation. And it turned out that she was in the market for the type of product that I was selling. And she was open to have a, a discovery call. So we got on a discovery call the next week. And I started off in a similar vein. It's like, hey, I know you said you're in the market for this. But can I tell you the three reasons why we may not be a good fit for you? Boom, pricing, boom, timing, you know, evaluation period. And she kind of, you know, said like, no, we're okay with all those things. It really just depends on the value and things like that. She was the one selling me on like the value conversation. Mm. Um, and ultimately it, the conversation went well, discovery, we booked a demo, we did a scoping call and they ended up being a customer. That was one of the, the first customers that had closed for that company. Yeah, I, I, I really like starting the discovery call out that way too, because it kind of takes it, the uh, tension out of the conversation and kind of almost puts them in the position of control in the conversation and uh, people like that. So what are some practical ways, two or three practical ways that people could, um, <clears throat> people listening to this conversation can start practicing radical honesty? Um, I mean, there, there, there's a few things, right? Like look at your discovery call, Look at the way you're running it. You know, if you have Gong, if you have like whatever call recording platform you're using, go back to it and then see where the objections come up, right? Is it coming up in the middle of the conversation towards the end? Is it on the third call, right? And try to like put yourself in your prospect shoes and really understand like, you know, what are they here for? What problems do they have? And how can you facilitate building trust with the, the buyer, right? Now, how can I move the sales cycle along? What's the best way that I can get to the next stage, to demo stage, to trial, to closing? But what can I do now to, you know, be upfront, to be honest and build that relationship? Because ultimately they're going to drive that sales cycle for you in that way. So it could be like at the beginning, if you're not talking about price until the very end, front load that to the very beginning, right? Um, if your product requires a very long evaluation period, front load it to the very beginning. Um, if maybe you're in a holding pattern, you know, maybe can you introduce them to a current customer as a case study, right? What can you do to kind of build that relationship? And I think honesty is the fuel that helps you drive that, but we're always focused on like, you know, what's the next sales technique or sales tactic to, you know, push it forward and close the deal faster. Just how can you build that relationship even more? Like I would say that's, that's what I would do. Yeah. I mean, everything you shared builds trust takes tension out of the conversation, builds rapport. Uh, those are all things that help deals move significantly faster because those things are going to come up either during yep. the sale or after the sale. Those things are going to come up. And so the sooner they come up in conversation, the more that it uh, yeah, opens the door for them to have a say in the conversation and how it's going and uh, to address those things and qualify themselves out so that nobody's wasting their time um, unnecessarily. Exactly. So what is the wildest thing that's happened to you <laughs> in sales? Uh, well, you know, I've been in software sales for, for about three years and it's mostly been remote, you know, inside sales. So I haven't had like my, like a door slammed at me or people cursing at me. Although I had a lot of that when I was doing a uh, telesurveys with Nielsen, I worked at the call center during college and I talked to some wild people there. <laughs> yeah. Um, actually, I, I called the DEA uh, at one point thinking it was a prospect and the person's like, yeah, this is the drug informants agency. You do not want to be calling this. I'm like, Oh, whoops. <laughs> but, um, That's hilarious. In tech sales in particular, I remember running a discovery, like an entire discovery call. Like, uh, the prospect is holding her baby and the baby was just like screaming bloody murder. She's just like <laughs> having a tantrum and I'm just trying to keep it together. Like going through kind of like my questions and trying to quantify the pain. It's like, Oh, so what percentage of your marketing qualified leads convert? As the baby is like screaming out loud, <laughs> she, she kept going. She didn't say like, oh, can we table this? I probably should have been a little bit more empathetic and kind of like, okay, let's just end it now. But I was kind of, I was new to the role. I was like, no, I need to get this through the next step. Oh, man. We ended up booking a demo eventually. So <laughs> I guess it worked out. <laughs> You're yeah. like, your pain points and problems seem like they're not related to <laughs> what we have to talk about today. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. It's yeah. like it has a little bit more to do with a screaming baby than <laughs> how many people are converting. 
Um, yeah. Well, awesome. Juan, thank you so much for joining us today. And if you enjoyed this episode, definitely subscribe and leave us a five-star rating and tune in again next time for the next conversation about Outbound. Appreciate it. Thank you, Joseph. <laughs>